For the past several decades, the reliability and performance of automobiles has depended mainly on the quality of mechanical components. If our carburetor or fuel injectors aren't built just right, we end up walking home. If our spark plugs didn't spark or our cooling system sprung a leak, that tow truck would be along. Sometime soon, hopefully. (laughs) But today there is a revolution afoot in automobiles. With electric powertrains, automated driver assistance, connected cars, and even autonomous driving, it's going to be the quality and performance of electrical and electronic components that determines whether we're riding or walking. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. With the dramatic changes in automotive technology, we need to take another look at the components that go into our cars. In this episode of Chalk Talk, my guest is Nick Stephen of Kemet, and we're going to look at components for the next generation of automobiles. Let's get our motors running, shall we? And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Kemet. Hi, Nick. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. Good to be here again. So, Nick, it's been a little while since we last did a Chalk Talk with Kemet, and you guys recently passed your 100-year anniversary. So what's been going on? Today, I'll be talking about a couple of different things, but most importantly, I'll be focusing on electrifying the automotive industry and how it impacts Kemet. But before that, I do want to talk a little bit about the history of Kemet. So Kemet has been around for 100 years, and last year we celebrated our anniversary. Over the last couple of decades, we have made a lot of notable changes and acquisitions. With all these acquisitions, we expanded from our typical tantalum and ceramic capacitors to include other capacitor types such as film and electrolytics. In 2017, we acquired a company called Token, and with this acquisition, we expanded our range into the magnetics products. So now we have a portfolio of inductors, chokes, and filters. We also have a lot of sensors and actuators products as well. So basically, we're positioning our technologies and offerings for the major trends of the future, such as automotive electrification, industrial automation, which includes a lot of artificial intelligence, and also 5G connectivity and cloud. Okay, let's talk more about these trends. Sure. We're focused on the major trends that affect our industry, as I mentioned before. There's mainly four of them. There's this concept of high density and low latency communication. And yes, that's talking about 5G, but it also includes everything associated with it, such as edge computing and data processing. Then we have advanced energy conversion. So the wide band gap semiconductors and the effects that it'll have on our industry. As a components manufacturer, this is a huge trend focus for us. I just talked about industrial automation and artificial intelligence. And of course, we have electrification of transportation. This doesn't just include autonomous vehicles, but it also includes all the infrastructure that has to go in place to make this possible, such as charging stations, wireless charging, superchargers, etc. Essentially, we're lining up all of these trends to connect with our core capabilities. There's four major application areas. We have power conversion, filtering and electromagnetic compatibility, energy storage, and sensing. Now, tell me a little bit about Kemet's current portfolio. Okay, so everyone already knows we have capacitors. In the core, we will always be a capacitance company. In fact, we're the trusted global supplier for most tier one automotive companies. The major areas of focus are on automotive, high voltage, high reliability, and power. Then we also have a tier two of focus, and that would be industrial, alternative energy, cloud and connectivity, and aerospace and defense. We're also moving beyond capacitors into the magnetic space with the focus on material science and product development. The advantage here is that all the materials used for these products are manufactured in-house. This means that we have the capability to create solutions based on our customer needs. Beyond capacitors and magnetics, we're also building a sensor and actuators portfolio which targets high-value applications and markets. We're currently the technology leader in piezo ceramic and magnetic materials for sensor applications, and we have easy-to-design customization capabilities and solutions. Okay, but we're really here today to focus on the automotive. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about automotive electronics. In a vehicle, there are two different sections. There's powertrain and onboard electronics. If we're only talking about capacitors, yes, we do have offerings for both powertrain and onboard. But we have expanded our reach. As the amount of electronic content grows, so does Chemist's portfolio of solutions for that space. 
So what does the overall automotive market look like right now? Growth in the automotive electronics is not just in one area, but all automotive electrical systems, especially in the areas of powertrain and onboard electronics. If you look at the table, you can see that over the next decade, there will be an increase in automotive electronics in all areas, and power electronics has the highest percentage out of all of them. Okay, but what's really driving these trends in automotive? So there are two growth drivers in the automotive electronics. There's the powertrain electrification and onboard electronics. We're at a stage right now where we have plenty of options when it comes to vehicles. A while back, we only had one option, and that was the low-cost internal combustion engine, which dominated the industry. But now we can go from this low-cost ICE to three different flavors of powertrain. First, we have the gas or electric hybrid 48 volt systems. Then we have the plug-in hybrid vehicle, which stores and uses energy from the grid and has some electric driving capabilities. They require a larger capacity lithium-ion battery. Then we have the battery electric vehicle, which is all electric motor. There is no onboard power generation from fuel, and it has a larger battery, which enables longer range. In 2018, the internal combustion engine was dominating the industry. Looking forward to 2030, you can see that the ICE will be cut down to 50%, and the hybrid versions will have the largest share out of the remaining 50% of all electric vehicles. Everyone lately is fascinated with self-driving and autonomous driving. Can you talk about where we are with all of that? Sure. Most of the vehicles sold today are level one and level two. 90% of the vehicles sold today do not have any autonomous driving features. Although you have a lot of features like active braking, lane assist, adaptive cruise control, etc. Level three is conditional automation and you will see more of these in the next couple of years. Level four and five are considered full automation, and this is only at a concept stage right now, and it's way too risky to have these kinds of technologies in the streets. So don't expect any significant deployment until after 2025. More than 70% of light vehicles will have advanced driver assistance systems by 2030, and less than 10% of vehicles will have level four or level five autonomous driving. So I am assuming the first step of electrification comes from the powertrain. Can we talk more about that? The powertrain electrification, it includes everything from battery, onboard charger, electric motor, inverter, etc. It's obvious there's a lot of competition when it comes to this market, but the Kemet advantage really comes from some of these parts highlighted above. For example, we have the dual mode coils. This is a two-in-one solution. So for example, if you have an application where you have a common mode coil and a differential mode coil, you can essentially replace both of these coils with a dual mode coil. Then we have the ferrite materials where we have ownership of material production and product design. We also have several other capacitor products like our aluminum electrolytic axial capacitors. The main application areas will be in DC to DC converters, battery junction box, battery management, and power electronics. Okay, let's talk about wireless power transfer and what solutions Kemet can offer here. The image shows the whole process of wireless power transfer. We have the transmitter side, which is the charging stand, and we also have the receiver side, which is your vehicle. In the transmitter, we have AC power coming in, and it has to go through the process of converting that into DC power. For this process, we have line filters for the EMI stage. Then we have capacitors for power factor correction and resonant converter. And finally, we have differential mode and common mode chokes for conducted and radiated emissions. What about onboard electronics? Onboard electronics includes everything from the audio systems, LED lights, keyless entry, dashboards, and pretty much everything else you can think of. On the onboard electronics side, it's mostly capacitor heavy. We have MLCCs with ultra-stable dielectrics and high capacitance voltage offerings. Then we also have our first-to-market automotive polymer electronic capacitors. We also offer polymer and aluminum electrolytic, which has an extended lifetime capacitance voltage offerings with high ripple current capabilities. And finally, we have surface mount inductors. Wireless power transfer sounds interesting. Tell me a little bit more about that. Let's take this wireless power transfer to the next level. Higher frequencies are desirable for most applications. It allows the size of the components to be reduced and the prices to be cheaper, which leads to higher efficiency. When you increase the frequency of operation, it causes switching losses and hence reduces system efficiency. One solution here is to use wideband gap technologies, which enable higher frequencies. Another solution is to use a resonant converter, which allows for no power dissipation with this unique technique. Another way to maximize your efficiency is to recapture the lost flux and increasing the magnetic coupling. 
I'll talk a little bit about these in the next couple slides. So you said wide band gap enables high frequencies, but show me how that works. So I talked about how higher frequencies are desirable for applications because it increases efficiency. And wide band gap semiconductors enable higher frequencies. Let's look at the chart that shows power density versus frequency for different materials. For example, thyristor has a really, really good power density, but the frequency is really low. IGBT has an acceptable power density and frequency, but the size might be too big. Now, if you look at silicon carbide and gallium nitride, the frequencies are really high, which enables reduced sizes, and in result will give you higher efficiencies. So how does Kemet come into play here? As wide band gap semiconductors become more dominant, the need for higher frequency capacitors will increase as well. That's where Kemet comes into play. The chart on the right shows film or electrolytic capacitors versus ceramic capacitors. And as you can see, when you go higher up in the frequency, ceramic capacitors are more suitable for these applications. One solution that we offer is our KC-Link ceramic capacitors. The KC-Link capacitors have a high ripple current, temperature-stable capacitance, and a voltage-stable capacitance. So what about those ferrite tiles you mentioned earlier? The ferrite tiles are used in wireless power charging systems to increase system efficiency. It pretty much works by shielding and reflecting the magnetic field within the inductive transfer area. The picture shown here is a good example. You can see that there are two ferrite tiles, one on the transmitter side, which refers to the charging station or area. The second tile is on the receiving side, which is your vehicle for this application. If you know anything about magnetic field, it's all over the place. The ferrite tile pretty much contains the magnetic field and beams it into one direction, so we're minimizing power losses. That's what's happening between the two tiles. Kemet's ferrite tiles are designed with our latest proprietary ferrite material technology, and it offers highest charging efficiency. Now, where is Kemet headed with this in the future? So, in 2018, we came out with our Connect technology, which is a leadless multi-chip solution. It's designed for high efficiency and high density applications. I already talked about KC-Link, which was designed to meet the growing demand for the fast-switching wideband gap semiconductors that operates at higher voltages, temperatures, and frequencies. We'll be releasing a Connect version of our KC-Link in the next few weeks, so be on the lookout for that. In the future, we'll be coming out with more specialized Connect technologies, and eventually we'll be heading towards some module solutions. Miniaturization is also a popular trend in the industry. Everything is getting smaller and smaller. Back in the day, a mobile phone used to be big and chunky. The cell phones we have now are thinner and can function more efficiently. In the next decade, we could potentially see an all-in-one solution where all the components are packed into a small space. This is when our embedded passive solutions will become more useful. What we have now is a discrete solution where we have the capacitor, inductor, and integrated circuit on the same layer. With the embedded solution, it's a way to add a capacitive and inductive layer straight into the PCB which will give you about 60% area reduction. Of course, this is all in the future, and we're not all the way there yet, so be patient. So you've talked about how Kemet is really focused on advancing the digital experience. What specifically are you doing in that space? Here at Kemet, we have an application intelligence center where we focus on the application of our products rather than product specifications. At this lab, we do a lot of video experiments, we do lab solutions, we talk about some of the circuit basics, and you can find all of these videos on our YouTube channel. Then we have Engineering Center, which I've talked about in the past. We recently redesigned our Engineering Center, and now it's designed by engineers for engineers. You can find new weekly blogs, digital data sheets of our new products, calendar of events, and all of our design tools. Cool. Okay. So Nick, where can I go to find more information? You can get more information on all of our products that I talked about today on mouser.com slash Kemet. You can also find all of our digital tools and other resources like articles and blogs on mouser.com as well. Well, Nick, I think that's all I have time for today. I'm going to click on that link and go to a mouser.com page for more information. Thank you so much for joining me yet again, Nick. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for having me again, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Kemet. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>